So we're holding on to this little fraction. I would uh, propose that most people are either unaware they're holding on to it, or if they do become uh, aware that there's some holding on, they can't see how to let go. They don't know how to do that, right? I would say that applies to most of the human race, probably. Um, what I want to... Um, so, so we've already looked at how thoughts create that. So we can think of, back to the ick, I'm, I'm using ick to mean kind of the feelings that came from the thought. So if the ick are emotional feelings, if that's the fire, the thought process, even though it's a thought process of one tiny little fraction, 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 fraction of the event, that thought is like a log that's going in the fire of the feeling, right? We keep putting logs in there, or some of us have gas lines. <laughs> we just turn off the gas line, who cares about wood? Or we're just going to directly fuel that thing and keep it going all the time. It's our pilot light, right? When in doubt, I got that underneath. Mm, this isn't good, right? Um, so, what is thought? Is it real? In the last workshop we did here, I talked a little bit, I, I told a little story about the, my first meditation retreat where, uh, it was the first day of meditation where they had us label body sensations and then I said, well what about if I'm going knee, elbow, wrist, why does he keep doing that? He said, oh you just label that thought. And I had said, <laughs> we're making it sound like my thought is not me. <laughs> and he said, it's not. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> that was a whole different way of conceiving of it. And that's where I kind of went, oh, I see. I thought that voice in my head was who was driving the car. And I went, no, it's really what's on the radio. That's a different, it's the programming. You know, we've got the Lifetime Channel, and we've got, you know, Fox News, and we've got the soap opera, <laughs> and we've got the commercials, and, you know, all the different channels. And I thought, oh, that's what that is. Wow. So who's driving the car? That's another issue we can get to. Um, and in examining this thought, what is thought? So we go, so thought's not me. The Buddha, and I have a, a quote here. Uh, that I wrote down, that they quote this in the Buddha, and I'm afraid I don't know what sutta it's from, but I could look it up. We are not what we think. All that we are arises with our thoughts. With our thoughts, we make our world. Okay, so these thoughts, even though it's not reality, has uh, this uh, power to create, you know, our perception of an event. The thoughts can create this whole world. And I think uh, when people do these uh, uh, creative visualizations, they work with that in a productive, positive way. Okay, I can change my thought, I can change my world. Um, there was, uh, I recently listened to an interview of uh, a teacher who is uh, reputed to have reached a certain level of enlightenment um, and Somebody asked him, what's, what's the difference now, post-enlightenment versus pre-enlightenment for you? And he stopped for a second. He said, I don't believe my thoughts. I have them. I just don't believe them. And I think by believe, he was talking about that investing that we're talking about. I thought that was really interesting. The other thing he said that I thought was really interesting was... Um, he said, you know, uh, all um, the only functional, what did he use the word functional? I think functional thinking. Only functional thinking remained and all other thinking um, kind of died away. And functional thinking was the thinking you have to do to do things or to, hi, I've got to do this here. And all that extraneous da -da -da going over it, and he said that, other thinking we do that's not functional is 80 to 90 something percent of our thinking. So it got very quiet <laughs> when there was only functional thinking. I thought, oh, that sounds good. Um, there are many teachers in teaching that will call 
the world we live in, back to the Buddha saying we create, our thoughts create it, they'll call it a dream. That this is a dream we're creating. Right? And enlightenment, in fact, is often called waking up. And people who have had this enlightenment experience often describe it as just like waking up from a dream, except this is the dream. And there's a waking up. So I'm getting back to the big ick <laughs> and, this, and, and the bigger picture of this waking up. If this is a dream and we want to wake up, how do we do that? How do we wake up? Well, I was thinking about this, and has anyone know, does anyone know anything about lucid dreaming? My understanding of lucid dreaming, and, and I've yeah, I read a couple books and I've had the experience a lot, so uh, mine is, we all dream, right? You've closed your eyes, you dream. I'm a big dreamer. And this other world comes in, right? It's really, really real. And then you wake up in the morning and you go, oh, it's not that world, it's this world, okay. And sometimes that world was more real than this world. Lucid dreaming is when you wake up in your dream, okay? So you're in a dream, and then in the dream, you realize you're dreaming. And as soon as you realize you're dreaming, you then see how you, you then know that you are creating this world and you have the power to change anything. That's a really insultingly simplification of it, but I'm going to go with that. Right? So in lucid dreaming, lucid dreaming is about waking up in your dream. And one of the ways that they, and, and when you wake up in your dream, as soon as you realize you're creating it, anything is possible. You're creating it. You can change anything. It's a whole different relationship to this world that's around you. It's as real as this. You, you feel this, you go like this, you go like this. It's quite real. But then you go, wait a minute, I'm dreaming. Well, how do you know you're dreaming? Now, I'd read this in a couple books and tried it out when I first wanted to start lucid dreaming, and they said there's certain flags that are indicators that you're dreaming. And they gave, and what two I got from the book, one was that there's a clock. If you look at a clock and you see the time and you look away and you look back and it's changed, or writing. If you see writing and you see writing on a page and you look away and you look back and the writing's different and you look away and you look back and it's different again or I have dreams where I'm looking trying to find the time or text somebody and every time I look down at my cell phone it's a whole different thing and I can't do it, right? That's a, that can be a flag down on the play that you're dreaming. And you can teach yourself to notice those and go, oh, I'm dreaming. And one of the ways they have you do it is to do it in life. In life you get used to every time you look at a clock, look away and look back. And it's the same. You go, okay, I'm not dreaming. And you just get in that habit, and then you do it in your dreams. And I have other flags. I fly. I don't know. Anybody here fly in their dreams? You know, I'm a big flyer. You know, fly. My dog who died like 10 years ago comes back, and I'm going, oh, great, he's here. I know he died, but he's there, and it's great, and I'm so glad to see him. And, you know, oh, I don't have to feed him. <laughs> I mean, you know, there'll be big, wondrous animals or, or amazing, something so amazing, a weather pattern so colorful and huge, and you go, this can't be real. <laughs> Maybe I'm dreaming, right? But this whole waking up in the dream. So, what would our flags be in this reality to wake up? If there's flags for waking up in dream state, for a lucid dream, to go, I'm dreaming. And once I realize I'm dreaming in the dream, I instantly go, oh, let me walk through that wall. <laughs> Do I start walking through walls? Oh, I can go through the ground. I start you know, wanting to fly and go through things, and I'm told that's a very, um, not juvenile, not immature, what's the word, they go, early lucid dreamers do that. They do that early in their lucid dreaming career when you want to fly and do some results or whatever it is, and then you grow up. They, they tap me on the head about that, but um, I'm not an advanced lucid dreamer. But if this is a dream, which we have several awakened people telling us it is, it seems kind of real to us, right? You hit your hand in the hammer, you, it seems very real. Anybody been in a car accident? There's a reality to that, right? Okay, that's a dream. How are we working with this? What are our flags in this world that go you're dreaming? Any thoughts? 